Hey Ash, All Things Dentistry, and welcome to another quick episode just talking about sinus tracks and x-rays and shift shots because it seems like one of the most frustrating things to do during a root canal is taking, an, taking a, a perioperative radiograph, you know, an x-ray with working legs. So we've got this guy, or not guy, this amazing patient, really nice gentleman, and we traced his sinus track approximately two weeks ago. I put it online. It was a really simple video. And one of the things that we I forgot to say was and do was you know cut the right there at, when it's in the, the gutta perch is just almost placed. Take some scissors and cut a little bit off the end so it doesn't the cheek doesn't pull it out when you place your radiograph. I learned that tip actually right after I placed right after I posted this um, video and I was like oh that's such a great idea. So the patient presented this evening just a few hours ago and we're all healed up. So I don't see any radiographic, I see few radiographic changes, but our sinus tract is gone. So here your patient is now, you can compare it to the previous uh, video before. I'm just trying to make sure that we're good to go with our sinus tract. So there's no, I'm using my period probe, just kind of feel around and that's that. So let's take a look at, so when I, when the patient left four weeks ago, we placed calcium hydroxide in the canal. So we, I open to a primary uh, wave one gold to, you know, it's a 2507. Make sure it's, I've got adequate width to get my irrigant into the canals and clean everything out. And one of the things I couldn't do is get him to stop seeping. So the distal canal just kept weeping, 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 clear fluid. And at, at, at some point you're just like, okay, we're going to place calcium hydroxide because trying to obturate a case that is still seeping is hedging your bets, bets that it's not going to work. So in the radiograph here, we have composite. Um, then we have some cavit, and then I place some, some calcium hydroxide. Now, one of the cool things I actually learned online a while ago was sometimes when you place your cotton pellet, you know, you place your cotton pellet into the access cavity, and then there's little frizzles of strands of cotton going everywhere, and you're trying to cram it in there, and at some point, you're just like, I've had enough. I'm going to place my temporary and be off. Well, the problem is, is that there's a, there's a potential for those little frizzles of cotton to act as super highways for bacteria which then travel into your root canal. So what I've started to do especially in a case like this is not use a cotton pellet but place calcium hydroxide right in the chamber you can see it here right fill up the chamber and then place cavit on top and then I place composite over that because I wanted this patient to sit with calcium hydroxide for a little bit longer period of time. Everyone has a different article that they can reference about the optimal time for calcium hydroxide because you need to consider um, making the tooth more brittle or, or, you know, I mean, is that really the correct way of saying it, making the tooth more brittle? Regardless, patients sat for four weeks, came back, sinus tract is healed, and you can see here we've got a little bit of resolution. We'll compare it to there. Just a subtle little bit of resolution. But I went ahead and obturated because I had the sinus tract which was healed and I was able to adequately dry the canals. So I was super happy. But you can't, I mean in the superimposed mesial canals, you can't tell which canal is which. Which is a buccal, which is a lingual. Now, so I take my shift shot and that is my question for you out there. Is can you tell me what, based on just this x-ray, can you tell me what type of shift shot this is? In my three previous takes, I gave away the answer but I decided to redo the video. So what type of shift shot is this? Is it a distal or a mesial shift? And which canal is which? So based on the slob rule, so same side lingual, opposite side buckle, are you able to tell me which canal is this and which canal is this? And this can tell us so many details about which canal is obviously which canal is which, but if your file is long in one canal, you know, doing a shift shot and practicing that can help us during a root canal to not get your hair more gray and white like mine or pull it out because working length radiographs can be super frustrating. So taking time to learn this really well, the slob rule can be very helpful. So thanks so much for watching. Subscribe and place your comments below. I'd love to hear what you think. Cheers.